If our membership is not behind something, we do not take it to the bargaining table. It's not something that's a decision that's made by the staff or, or something like that. The second thing we also do is we also go through and kind of gauge what the community is also about. And so all of these sort of things go into a bargaining proposal. The one thing about a mandatory subject of bargaining is the reality is, is if we bring up a mandatory subject of bargaining in our bargaining proposal, the first thing that the other side can do is say, we're not going to talk about it. It is a mandatory, it's not a mandatory, it's a mandatory, it's not a mandatory subject of bargaining. And if you even bring it to us, we can file an unfair labor practice against you. That's not the way we want to work. What we want to do is sit down and talk. Um, when we talk about um, bargaining, it's also um, not going to be dictated by the state. Everything that we do in bargaining is local. And so if you've heard that, well, we, we can't afford this because we're, the class sizes are going to be too small, that's what you sit down and talk about. In the rural areas, it's not class size. It's the number of preparations that you have. So if you only have 77, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, and you're the only English teacher, you're going to have six preparations. And that's the, the, the workload issue that they've got. So I think that's very important. Um, Districts, when you sit down and talk about bargaining, I knew exactly to the penny how much the district had that they could use for bargaining. And most people that sit down and, and bargain labor contracts know that. And the reason is, is you cannot put any of your employers into a deficit situation. It's not something that the employers are going to agree to, and it's not something that the employees are. Um, they say that it will force districts to choose between services for children and um, and class size, and that's not the case. You know as well as I do that this is not an issue that the children are going to, that the teachers are going to put children at risk. The number one people that care the most about kids, and we've seen it time and time and time again, are the teachers, and they would never do that. And so what this is, is the idea of being able to sit down and have that conversation without the other side going through and saying, legally we don't have to talk about it, we're not going to. Class size is also something that's extremely important, um, and this is on a sidelight. Um, when I taught at Milwaukee High School, we had class size in our contract back in the 70s and 80s. And the class sizes were small enough that if I could look out in, in my class and I could see that there was something wrong with the student, that they just weren't there that day. And so I could go to them and I say, you know, you know, Mira, what's, what's the problem? What's going on? And on more than one occasion, it was things like, my parents are getting divorced. I'm being pulled out of the home because my dad beat me up. Um, I have to go through and, 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 and get a job because my dad and my mom can't find one. And so those are the sort of things that class size really make a difference to be able to connect with the kids and also connect with the parents. So I strongly urge a vote on this. It just means that people can sit down and have that conversation, and that's extremely important. Thank you.